Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here in Eat Sleep Brief. In this video, we're going to be covering quite a bit. So there's not going to be uh, much showing of the tank um, other than what we're going to be talking about. So last week, I think, I want to say it's been, I want to say it's been about a week since I started uh, the calcium reactor. Got it uh, pretty dialed in now. I'm actually pretty comfortable with it. i uh, been running it again for about a week. Guys, all I can tell you is I wish I would have done this sooner. Um, it's funny how I thought two-part dosing was easy. This thing is easier than easy. Uh, you know, once you get around the hurdle of, of kind of the, the whole learning curve, which is what I've been trying to teach you guys, it really kind of is the way to go. So we're going to do, guys, we're going to jump right into it again. We have a lot to cover. Um, what we're going to be covering today is kind of uh, the steps to getting it running. Um, it won't be in full detail, but it, it's going to be here just a, a generic uh, what you need to do or what I had to do to get this thing up and running. Um, so let's jump right into it. It's very important before you do start your calcium reactor that you test your levels. Um, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium. Um, here you can see my alkalinity was kind of where I always hold it, about 8.7. Um, phosphate doesn't really matter. Um, but I did record that 8.7 is kind of where we started. If you do need to make any adjustment on your levels, do so now. Um, a calcium reactor should not be used to make adjustments. It's used to maintain. So if any value is not where you want it to be, be sure to make adjustments. Um, if you guys can see here, I actually had my calcium a little bit lower than I like, uh, but no biggie. I was able to compensate, bring it up to 400, um, and pretty much was ready to get the calcium reactor hooked up uh, so you give it a, a fair shot of at least holding stable parameters. If you're like me and you are using the Milwaukee uh, pH controller, you want to be sure you calibrate your... Uh, pH probe, this is important even if it's brand new out of the box, you still want to calibrate it. Luckily this one uh, here comes with your solutions to do the calibration. Uh, so just do your solution, make any adjustments if you do need to make them. Um, and at least that way you know your controller is ready to rock and roll. So next thing is going to be to hook up the regulator here to the CO2 tank. Uh, you can see it's a very straightforward, just some uh, minor tools needed to do this. You want to make sure you get it really, really tight. Um, last thing you want is going to be uh, any CO2 looking out. Uh, if you're using this regulator, you're going to use uh, notice a Teflon spacer that goes in between the regulator and the tank. And again, just put that into place and it should uh, hold very well. So one thing I had to do once I had the whole system up and going, I had to prime it. So you can see I have uh, the Komora pump here kind of running at full speed. Um, you'll be able to see the reactor here kind of uh, full with water already. Um, also, I'm shaking the reactor to make sure it, I work all the bubbles, or as, not all of them, but as many as you can out of it. And this will just ensure that, uh, you know, everything's good to go, ready to accept the reactor, and in essence, pretty much ready to take the tank to the next level. Once you have all the water running through the whole uh, reactors, both of them, obviously, in my case, if you have two, two, if you have one, one, uh, you want to make sure you let this reactor or these reactors, the setup run uh, for about one to two days. Uh, again, you want to make sure all the bubbles are, are ran out of it. You want to make sure you're getting a good circulation within it um, before you put the CO2. Because uh, the last thing you want, you know, is to have any misreadings or uh, the CO2 mixing with too much air in the in the in the uh, reactor. Uh, so just allow a few. I would say one to two days. Uh, the reactor uh, running but without the co2 no co2 tank none of that attached and again this is just ensuring that a lot of the bubbles get worked out once you do have it running you are going to notice bubbles in there um, because again co2 will be getting injected and co2 is a gas uh, but again this is just uh, to make sure everything's nice dandy more importantly you have no leaks um, in your setup so if you did everything okay and you know you got no issues you should have no leaks if you guys haven't already noticed on my Kamora pump, you see I've already done uh, the RO fittings uh, mod. I do have a video here on YouTube that will show you guys how to do that. It's just a lot easier. Uh, the silicone, you know, I don't trust it too much. Um, I'm not saying this one's bad. I haven't tried it, the one they supply you with. But there's nothing like solid RO lines that you know aren't going to fail. Uh, you know they're going to be very difficult to leak and you just always have a solid seal. Um, and this is why I did it. Again, you don't have to do this, but for me, uh, I just felt a lot more comfortable with it. So if you do want to do it, great. If you want to use what comes in the box, you know, that's also great as well. 
it's funny probably within about two three hours in I immediately noticed the water leaking you can see here luckily it wasn't too much uh, it was just a little bit coming out and it was coming out of the second reactor so I had to kind of shut everything down uh, figure out first clean up it luckily it wasn't too much but clean up you know all the water residue uh, figure out where it was coming from um, and I found out pretty much what happened these seals weren't seated right uh, that was my fault because when I seated them they have a groove that they're supposed to sit in uh, so what I did I cleaned everything up I opened everything uh, dried it up again tightened it uh, one thing you want to remember guys not only with these reactors but any reactor that has an o-ring you don't want to over tighten it there is such a thing as overdoing it um, that's a very critical part but again the reason we don't want any co2 at this time imagine if we would have had co2 we would have uh, maybe been wasting a little bit not only that it would have been a little bit more complicated to uh, address the issue so one thing i was able to do now uh, that we no longer have uh, the, the uh, or no longer need the dosers was I finally got to remove these guys. You don't know what a great feeling it was removing these, getting all this huge clutter, all these wires out of here. Uh, I was very happy to get uh, pretty much this two-part dosing system offline, free up some space, and you can see I was able to um, allow for the um, for the regulator and the CO2 tank to come in. Now I did already install the one-way valve. I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm going to be filling up uh, the little uh, bubble counter reservoir. Uh, now one thing I, I, I noticed, I did a lot of research, and I noticed in the Milwaukee manual they don't tell you what to fill it with. Um, I've seen some guys talk about oil, some guys uh, like mineral oil, some guys talk about uh, water. So at the end of the day, I ended up going with the water method. Uh, some people complain of evaporation. Uh, I've been running it for about a week and a half. I haven't noticed that much or any evaporation at all. Um, and again, this is just standard RO water, uh, nothing crazy. Now, in starting, uh, once you start uh, to introduce gas into this regulator, uh, there is a step, or there is steps. And again, if you follow the manual, uh, you won't have to worry about this, but I know a lot of us don't. Um, so the first thing you want to do is get water in your res in the bubble counter. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure the big knob is all the way backed out. If this is not all the way backed out, you run a risk of damaging uh, the little, uh, it has like a bladder inside. Uh, so it's very important you back it all the way out um, and make sure there's no pressure on that bladder. Because if there is pressure, when you open the tank, you can potentially burst it, um, essentially damaging it. So it's very important, uh, This uh, valve, the big valve, the big knob is fully open. You also want to make sure the fine-tuned knob, the little one, is all the way open. Um, so again, the main one is, is uh, backed all the way out, as well as the, the fine one backed all the way out. So the first step is going to be to open up the main, main valve on the tank, uh, the CO2 tank. You're going to open that up. You should see no CO2 flowing through it. The next step is going to be the the black knob. You start turning that in. Now, immediately, you guys are probably going to want to open this full blast and make your adjustments on the, the small one under the bubble counter. That's not what you want to do. The reason for that is you, want, you don't want too much pressure on the solenoid uh, when it is kicking on and off. So it's better you initially dial it in, making your, your overall adjustments on the big knob when you're ready and you're pretty happy with the bubble count, then you move forward to the fine tuning uh, knob under the bubble counter. Again, this just ensures uh, that there isn't too much back pressure on the solenoid, um, which would happen if you would just run uh, the black knob all the way down. So once you are uh, pretty happy with it, obviously it's going to take you probably two days to dial in the bubble counter. I think it took me about a day and a half. Um, which is why I also recommend you doing this on a weekend, a day that you're going to be able to monitor it, take care of it. Um, obviously, the pH controller is there to kind of babysit it if the pH does go under a certain level, um, so there isn't too much. Ideally, you want to be able to adjust this where the pH controller isn't shutting on and off constantly. Um, that'd be a good idea. Um, obviously, if you do want to shut off on and off constantly, you're perfectly fine, but I figure if you dial it in the correct way, you shouldn't have to worry. Uh, so once CO2 is being injected, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the Kimura pump, you can see here, you're able to make adjustments. The first day, guys, I was overdosing. I started at like 35 mils a minute. It was way too much. I had an elk spike. 
Luckily, the corals didn't mind it at all. Um, but ideally, now I have it anywhere from four to four to ten milliliters a minute um, for my setup in my corals it's perfect you can see here the the ph controller um, is still uh, lowering the ph this was when i first hooked it up uh, so 7.9 obviously is not where you want to be it's still quite a bit too high there's no media uh, that's going to be melted when the ph is that high uh, but once you do get the ph controller uh, working properly you can see here i'm holding a solid 6.6 uh, to 6.5 which is certainly melting the media one thing I like about this controller, it's very affordable, very easy to control the pH here on this dial. Uh, you can set it whatever you want to be, so it can either shut on or shut off depending on um, where you want it to hold uh, that pH. But this this guy's really, I haven't had to tinker with it. I just put the pH I want, it takes care of it, and um, allows everything to be uh, really simple and straightforward. A lot of people are going to be asking in a nutshell how this thing is wired up so i'm not going to go into detail but we are going to do a rundown um, so this here is going to be uh, the ph probe so this is what's going to be measuring the ph that is in the uh, in the reactor chamber so this allows me to know you know if i need to adjust the bubble counter either pump more co2 less co2 and this here is where the co2 is injected you guys can see the one-way valve um, the bubble counter is right here on the regulator um, and the, here's the big dial that we were talking about earlier um, obviously the tank so um, the co2 gets injected here in the very middle and then from there we have the output line so since we are running another uh, reactor in the back you can see the output line instead of going back into the tank it's going back into the other chamber which again allows for more contact time uh, with the media which allows for the pH to rise uh, obviously a bit now this one here in the back that's a little bit hard to see this is where the water comes in from the tank so this is my input line um, this is again where the water is coming from the tank now the reason I didn't color them any certain colors is because I love the color blue and white I figured I don't want to uh, you know add red or black to it so uh, this for me worked out well and you can see here uh, the Kimura pump as far as how it's getting water it's sucking water through so it's not pushing but it is sucking water uh, right now we're running it at six to eight milliliters a minute uh, that tends to hold a solid uh, alkalinity of about 8.5 8.9 so here is the input so the input again remember guys it's sucking water right so the input is actually coming from the second chamber um, you can see from this line here so that is where the water um, comes in from and you can see it makes its way turns uh, through the little dial and then the output comes all the way um, on the very top and you guys can see uh, this is where it's dripping now as far as where i have it dripping i actually ended up putting it in my refugium um, i don't you know want to get too crazy into it but obviously refugiums will thrive on low ph so i figured why not use the chato to increase to consume the pH which is going to be beneficial for everyone um, so that's why I'm running it here uh, you're also able to see the inlet here to the right and that's pretty much it in a nutshell here you guys are able to see the whole setup you know my whole wiring I'm still not done with it I'm gonna make this a lot cleaner I know a lot of you guys are thinking this is clean believe it or not this to me is still a mess uh, so I still have to work on it uh, but guys hopefully i didn't lose you guys too much again i didn't want to make this too um how to i just want to show you guys how my setup is in my specific tank um obviously in the future i can get a lot more in detail um i think one of the next videos we're going to have is how to tune a calcium reactor once you have it running how exactly do you tune it you guys are going to see it's so 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 simple um way easier than two-part dosing so i'm very excited to, to give you guys that video so guys we're going to end this video here. I know I did a lot of talking. Hopefully I didn't lose a lot of you guys. Um, let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about this setup. I'm super excited for it. Anytime we get new equipment, I always get really excited. So having this new reactor on board, I'm so in love with the tank. I'm so engaged with it um, and just look forward to coming home and checking it out every day. So guys, we're going to leave this here again. Let me know down in the comment box below if you stayed till the very end. Let me know what you think about this setup. Let me know what you'd love to see in the future. I'd love to hear from you guys. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.